Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Sue. This is our home here in Connecticut. I'm excited to show you around. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Sue DeChiara. This is our dog, Cosmo, and we're in New Canaan, Connecticut. Cosmo is absolutely a member of this family. He, you could say, sometimes rules the house. He's a Havanese, and he's about seven years old. I have to remind myself he's seven years old because he really has the energy of a new puppy. We first moved to this house about, it's almost nine years now. We were living not too far away, but in New York, which is only like eight miles away from here, um, for a very long time. But my kids were going to school here in Connecticut. My husband works here in Connecticut. So we had been looking for a really, really long time for a home in Connecticut to move to. And when we found this house, we absolutely fell in love with it for a number of reasons. Um, the brick, the layout, and I was just able to envision my furniture moving in here perfectly. So we moved here, like I said, about nine years ago. And when we first moved in, I had all three of my kids here. And now, Nine years later, my oldest is 23 and she lives not too far away in the city. And my middle is away at college. She just left for her senior year. And my youngest is now a senior in high school. This is definitely a colonial, center hall colonial. I think it's called post-Georgian style home. I might be getting too fancy for myself here, but it's definitely a center hall colonial, which is a very typical style for homes here in New England, meaning really that it just has a center hall down the upstairs, which the bedrooms are all located off of. Welcome to our front entrance. Our front entrance looks a lot like the front entrance in our old home because I really loved how that came out. So I pretty much almost duplicated it exactly with the same type of stripe wallpaper and furniture, but we took this large chandelier from our old home. That's a John Rosselli wrought iron light fixture that I absolutely love. So I was thrilled that it worked here because we really needed a super large fixture to sort of fill the space. And right when you walk in the door, I hit you with some of my favorite things that I own which are the three silhouettes of my children from when they were much younger. These are done by a New York City artist, Carter Custera. I hope I'm saying his name right. I first discovered his work in the dressing room of Barney's New York, RIP Barney's New York, but um, I guess he was friends with the people at Barney's and he had done silhouettes of the salespeople that worked at Barney's at the time all over the walls of the dressing rooms. And then I saw his work again after loving it there at Jonathan Adler. And I was thrilled to see that you could commission him to do portraits for your own pets or yourself or your children. And so I got in touch with him and the process was a lot of fun. He just had me take photos of each child. You come up with a fun little expression that sort of personifies who they are. And then he has you choose any Benjamin Moore, Benjamin Moore color under the sun. And that was an awful lot of choices. So I had these three little books in the front entry at the time. And I thought they were kind of a nice little fun pop of color. And I took these books to the paint store, matched them to Benjamin Moore colors, and that's how I came up with the three colors to use for the kids. I love this tiny little painting. I don't really remember where I got it. It might have been from Etsy. But what I love about it is the home we used to live in in Westchester was a white colonial with black shutters and we had a red front door. And so that reminds me of that house, which I loved. 
In our front entry, in addition to showcasing what I said was some of my favorite art in the house, I also have a lot of animal prints. I love animal prints. I think I'm even, I'm wearing a leopard print, with a zebra print here, sort of an antelope print here. Um, and I also am drawn to stars and star motifs. Um, and they're subtle, but they're, they're around too. So you can see there's like an inlaid star over here on this piece of furniture. There's stars over here. Once you start to look for them, there's stars here as well. I was a real estate attorney. And then we moved up here to the suburbs, which is almost the country because it's pretty rural up here. Um, and I raised my kids and I didn't work as an attorney anymore. And I got really into home decor as a hobby. And around 2009, I started getting really into home decor blogs. And I thought it would be fun to start one of my own, which I did. And about 13 years later, I'm still blogging about home decor. I absolutely love it. And it's opened up so many wonderful doors for me. And it even gave me, long story short, um, the courage, for lack of a better word, to pursue a career as an artist, which is what I do now. I'm an abstract artist. I was a fine art minor in college. So I actually kind of came back to my roots after all this time. The artist thing was always sort of bubbling under the surface. I never really let go of that thought. I would take art classes here and there. I took them in the city at the 92nd Street Y for a bit. Um, and so it was just sort of percolating under the surface for a while. So this is our living room. It's our formal living room and it probably gets the least use out of all the rooms in the house. I mean, I love to look at it, it's so pretty, but I'd be lying if I said we hung out in here a lot. But I do have a lot of my favorite things in here, um, starting with one of my own original art pieces over here above the fireplace. And as you can see, I'm using some soft blues here and some neutral tones. And like I said earlier, I always like to incorporate blue and blue and white wherever I can. The ceiling in here, I don't know if you can pick it up, but it's actually not white. It's a very pale shade of blue. And that's something we learned about um, years ago. We took a trip down to New Orleans during Mardi Gras and we did a tour. I think it was the Garden District. And that's when I learned about the Southern tradition of haint blue and how it's, hopefully I'm not getting this wrong, how it's supposed to keep evil spirits away if you paint the ceiling blue and they traditionally do it on their, portr on their front porches. And I was so charmed by the idea of doing ceilings in a very pale shade of blue that I hung on to that idea. And I have a, blue, a few blue ceilings throughout the house. It's subtle, but it's there and it's blue. And then we also have more blue and white, which I love these pieces. Um, again, there's some stars here. There's more stars on the mirror. I love mirrors too. There's a lot of mirrors in the house, just like how they bounce the light around. I also love candles. What's fun about these tables, uh, years ago when we first started getting pieces for our home, um, we were much, much younger. And we thought our style was a lot more formal than it really was. I don't know, we were almost like, too young to be setting up a house. And we had these very formal demi loons. They were kind of beige with like gold um, touches. And I don't know, they just looked very formal, very Versailles, which isn't really our style. So years later, we got the great idea from a designer I was working with to have them painted. Um, and it really, I think, makes them so much fresher and more modern. And I just love how it came out with a high gloss gray paint on it. This piece over here is by Matthew Heller. It's actually the lyrics, as you can see, to Blackbird, a John Lennon's song that my husband and I both love. And, you know, it looks like poetry, but it's also, most people know the Blackbird song. So it's very special. These are actually faux flowers. They're silk flowers from a company here in Connecticut, Diane James Home. I know the owners. I actually met them, uh, two twins 
their sisters and they run the company for their mom. And they're now friends of mine that I met from first starting that home decor blog back in 2009. From here, I'll take you to our dining room, which is just on the other side of our entryway. This, I love this room. Um, I love the wallpaper we have here. It's Susan Harder um, painted wallpaper. And I just think it's so soothing and so pretty and it references, you know, the rural landscape that we live in and the soft colors I think are so pretty. I didn't want to hang too much on the walls here because I didn't want to take away from the, you know, just how pretty this all looks. These mirrors were a fun idea. They kind of remind me of like champagne bubbles. They seem very effervescent to me. I was struggling for the longest time uh, what to hang on this wall. I wanted to cover it up. I didn't want to cover it up. It looked a little too sterile without something there. I tried so many things. I put furniture in front of it. And then I saw in a magazine, I forget the name of the designer, but he had mural wallpaper in a dining room and he had done something very similar with a lot of federal style round mirrors. So um, I leaned on Fiona Leonard. She's a designer here in Darien, um, next town over. And I got her opinion. I was like, is this something we should be doing here? Do you think it will work? Because, you know, I'd be putting nails through uh, the wallpaper. So either it's going to look right and you're going to nail it or it's going to ruin the wallpaper. So she encouraged me to go for it and I ordered the mirrors. They're actually from Ballard Design. They're not expensive at all. And um, I was still panicked the day we came to hang these up. And I got the bright idea to take paper plates <laughs> and use painter's tape. And I put the plates on the wall where I thought the mirrors should go because I was still like, oh, if I hate it, that's it. They've got to stay there. I'll have punctured this beautiful wallpaper. So we put the paper plates up on the wall and then I got really excited because I was able to envision it. I'm a visual person. I needed to get a sense of it. Once I saw the paper plates on the wall, it was a go and I absolutely love how it came out. We have um, mostly holidays are all in here. Uh, once in a while, we'll have a dinner party. We're having friends over for dinner actually this Friday night. Um, I thought about maybe setting it up ahead of time. I just didn't get to it. I thought I'd make it all pretty, but um, it's only Wednesday and they're not coming till Friday. Uh, we are entertaining then. And so we do Christmas, we do Thanksgiving, we do Hanukkah, we celebrate everything, the major holidays. We do it all in here and every once in a while we'll have a dinner party in here as well. But we don't typically eat our meals in here as a family. We're pretty informal people. Over here by the fireplace, guess what? More stars. Um, so like I said, I'm just, I'm not trying to put stars everywhere, but I am drawn to them. And at some point I just sort of realized that we have a lot of stars in our house. So like most of the furniture, in this house, uh, it's from our old home back in Westchester. But one thing I didn't um, take with me was the chandelier from our old home. I wanted to go something a little bit more glam, a little bit more modern. And I'm a big fan of the Aaron Lauder line of lighting. And when I saw this fixture, I knew it was the perfect opportunity to put it in here. It's a great mix of glam modern and traditional and I really think it just suits this room so nicely. So right off the dining room we have our butler's pantry which is another one of my favorite spots in the house. When people come inside my home I want them to feel mostly at ease. I don't want them to feel like this is a very stuffy place that you can't just you know relax. I want them to feel comfortable and I want them to get a sense of who we are as a family. I like to have a lot of personal mementos and heirlooms around us. So welcome to our butler's pantry. This is one of my favorite little rooms in the house. Um, when we first came to see the house, when we first bought the house, it was all dark, sort of like stained dark cherry wood. And it had a very heavy masculine feel to it. And as soon as I saw this space, 
I knew that I was gonna paint all the wood, uh, paint over the wood. I know some people don't agree with that, but it was absolutely my dream to do this high gloss blue pantry in here. And I absolutely love how it came out. And then again, we have a pale blue ceiling up here. We kept the original black granite. We kept the original sink, the original faucet. Really all we did was paint and change the hardware in this room and it really came together so beautifully. I was a little worried it was gonna be too dark, but I think the fact that it's so high gloss, lacquered walls like this, bounces the light around a lot, so that sort of saved it. And I think because it's a small space, but there is the lighting and the windows and the glass, and a lot of reflective areas. I feel like it is like a little jewel box. So I really love that aspect of it. So it really works being dark in this small space. So in here, I have uh, a lot of our china. It's our wedding china, which is Lennox, just a very basic Lennox china with a gold rim. And then later on, I started to collect these heron pieces which you can see behind these fun little, I guess they're artichokes, I'm not really sure. But these, I'm sure this pattern has a name, I'm not great with that, but it is heron, and I absolutely love this pattern. And I have a sugar bowl with the same pattern, which is just so pretty that my parents gave us for our one year anniversary back when we were newlyweds. And then my friend had an artist paint a little picture. This isn't Heron, but she had hired this artist to hand paint this little picture to match it. And you would think it is. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. I would say my style is very traditional, but I like to think I add enough modern flourishes to give it more of an eclectic, refreshed, newer traditional type of feel. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen. And unlike our living room, which gets the least bit of use, the kitchen, like most people's homes, is absolutely the most popular room in the house. It definitely gets the most use. It's where everybody congregates, whether it's around this center island, which when we entertain, we tend to mostly put out a very informal buffet. And we'll usually have people come in from the dining room with their plates, and go along the buffet. It also works if we're entertaining outside over here. People can come in and we use this as a buffet bar almost all the time. And then my son often eats breakfast at the counter. And we also have this breakfast area over here where we'll eat as well. Sometimes we'll entertain here as well. Sometimes if we're having a lot of family here, this becomes the kitty table and the dining room's just over there. And over here in this hutch, I have more blue and white pieces. Um, back when we first moved in here, in the old home, I should start there, I had a lot of blue and white pieces. Most of these are from our old home, but they weren't really collected together like this in a grouping. I had white pitchers and a lot of ironstone pottery in a similar type of hutch, but the hutch was blue-gray in our old kitchen, and so the white pottery really stood out against the blue cabinetry. And when we moved here, the white against the white really looked sterile and cold, and I got the idea to just grab all of my blue and white pieces and put them in here and showcase them in here. And then I just added these little two boxes on top. I got them from Amazon, not expensive at all. And it just sort of finished off this whole vignette really nicely. This house has a lot of fun little details. And one of my favorites is how the spice rack kind of just comes out from the molding over here. Um, I think that's a cool little detail. And it does the same thing on the other side. So your spices are really close to the stove. When we first came to look at the house, the kitchen, the layout was exactly what you're seeing now, but we just changed, like we did in the butler's pantry, we just changed the surface 
Um, this, like the butler's pantry, was kind of dark and heavier, had a masculine feel to it, wasn't really um, my style, our style. I love a white kitchen. Even if it's no longer trending, I will always love a white kitchen. It just reads very classic and clean to me. So I knew we were gonna paint over the cabinets and paint them white. And we ended up replacing the refrigerators. There were two refrigerators here. Everything was laid out exactly like this. I can't take credit for the layout at all. And I really think it works nicely. And um, we got rid of a lot of the extraneous molding and sort of just pared it down and simplified it. We redid the countertops. I think they were like a beige granite and uh, the counters were sort of like a beigey vanilla. And we resurfaced and put in new countertops. This is marble. And I know a lot of people get squeamish when it comes to marble. And you have to be willing to live with the dings and the stains and the etching. And don't look close enough because there's a lot of that going on here. But I love the look of the marble. And I am willing just to work with that. And over here along the edge, it looks like we have such a thick slab of marble, but that would have actually been a fortune. And so a great little trick is to do what they call mitering. And so they take a thinner slab of marble and they work with it this way and they'll put another slab this way and they'll seal it together to create that nice, thick, substantial, chunky look of marble without the same cost. So more blue and white pottery. The hydrangeas, hydrangeas are absolutely some of my favorite flowers and you are seeing the best of them right now. These are right from my own garden, right outside. I love hydrangeas. I try to keep them here fresh for as long as I can. And then sometimes even when they dry out, I'll keep them here as well. And then in the winter months, I usually have um, just greenery here, like Israeli ruckus, I think it's called. And that just stays green in water um, for a really, really long time. It's a great little hack. You can even order it on Amazon, but it's, it's a fresh um, stem. It's just not a flower. It looks really, really pretty. And um, getting back to the marble and the wear and tear it takes, when we first got marble counters in our old home, I was panicked and I got this big, thick butcher block and I figured, okay, anything we have to do any meats, any, any red wine, any sauces we're just gonna do on here, um, which was completely unrealistic. And over time, I just learned to live with the dings and the stains, like I said, and this just became purely decorative. And I'm always fussing and messing around with what's up here. I love candles and I just like to showcase cute little things. And I love how the butcher block um, adds some warmth to this white kitchen along with the brass hardware and the wood tones of the counter stools. It really helps to warm the space up. I have a lot of favorite candle scents. Uh, right now, um, as we head into fall, I'm really favoring this very musky Santal. It's one of my favorite scents, not just for candles, but for hand soap, uh, cologne, you name it. I'm into this scent, it's great. And so one of the nicest parts of, about our kitchen is all the natural light that floods in. We have these sliding French doors here. We have another set of French doors over here, the windows over here, and it heads, like I said, right out to our back patio. So welcome to our back patio. You're seeing the back of our house at the best time of year when it's really looking its sharpest with the pool open and the flowers all in bloom. And I just love the look of green and white. I think it looks so pretty and I like to keep it simple with just one color pattern, the green, the white, and we continued it out along the side of the pool. And then all the hydrangeas are along the house this way. We like to really push it with how much time we can spend out here. Um, we have a fire pit over here and the pool has a little hot tub part to it. So we'll really stretch it right into mid fall um, and then it becomes a little crazy and it gets too cold and we have to close the pool. Um, but we like to open it fairly early in the season. By the last week in April, we're, we're probably itching to open the pool just because even if we're not using it, it just looks so much nicer when we have the pool open versus when it's all closed up. 
As far as my art goes, I'm inspired mostly by the colors um, that I'm drawn to. A lot of neutrals, a lot of soft blues, uh, sort of like the coastal area of Connecticut if you were to break it down into an abstract. A lot of beiges, a lot of white, like I said, a lot of different tones of blue. I'm inspired by nature. I'm inspired by other artists. I like to see what they're doing. There's so many talented artists in this area alone that it's very inspiring. Right off the kitchen, we have our family room, our TV room. And like the kitchen, this is really where we spend 90% of our time is in this room right here. We've got the TV in here, which is one of the reasons why we're spending time in here. Proximity to the kitchen is so nice. It's really the central room of the house. As you can see, you can almost see all the other rooms on the first floor from this spot. The butterflies are a fun thing. Um, again, like the stars, it was just sort of evolved over time. Um, when I had my first child, I got one of these little Baccarat butterflies as a gift, a uh, little pink butterfly. And I thought it was so charming um, that when I had my next daughter, I bought one for myself. And then when I had my son, obviously I bought a blue one. I had these before we moved to this house and I just thought it would look so cute if I displayed them on the fireplace when we moved here. And then when we moved here, I had these big walls I needed to get some art for. And I, I had seen these butterflies before. They're by a company called Natural Curiosities. They make really fun, really beautiful wall art. And I love how they frame them in these acrylic frames, acrylic boxes. And I immediately thought of these butterflies because they've got the pink and they've got the blue and they're rather large. And I think they work perfectly in here and they add a nice fun pop of color as well. So one thing I learned from working with professional designers through the years and just penning my blog all about interior design for so many years is you definitely don't wanna push your furniture up against the wall, even though that's very tempting. You think, oh, it's a big space, I wanna maximize the space, I wanna use all the room, but that's not always the best way to go. Um, so as you can see, we're sort of floating the couch off the wall, and this couch is not on the wall. Very few pieces are actually against the wall, and I really think it helps to center the room, bring it all together, makes it feel a lot cozier, and just gives it a very polished look. On the couches in here, again, we've got blue and white happening in here. We've got a bunch of fun patterns with blue and white in here. And I think the way this all seems to work together is that we're sticking to the blue and we're not working with too many other colors because I think it would be pretty chaotic if we introduced a bunch of other colors into the pattern. But if you stick with the same blue tones, I think you can get away with using a bunch of fun different patterns. Uh, the pillows here are from a company called Quadrille, and I absolutely love, I mean, almost every fabric this company puts out. I think they're so fun. They use um, great colors, they have great motifs, and I just love the fabrics. Over here on the coffee table, um, I didn't want to put too many things on the coffee table in here because like I said, we're in here a lot. We've got our feet up usually on the table, watching TV, you don't want it to obstruct the view. But I didn't want to have nothing either. Um, so I have a tray here which sort of helps to just organize and corral everything together. All the remotes and everything, instead of having it just look messy, they go in here. Another candle more animal print with the little cute little ceramic zebras I have over here. They reference the zebra when you walk in the front door. More zebra pattern over here on the little footstools by the fireplace. These were just a fun little find I uh, found on Etsy. Um, and these are just fun wooden beads I found at a garden store. I just thought they looked really pretty in the bowl. The thing I love most about this home is the layout. I think it's very elegant, very gracious. The rooms flow together beautifully. And I've actually thought about it because sometimes I think it would be a dream to build our own home. Um, 
could be a nightmare too. And I really think the way this home was laid out, I don't know that I would change a lot about it. I think it just makes sense. Um, it has everything we need and I'm really grateful for that. And then just off the kitchen, over here on the other side, we have our mudroom entrance, which is the entrance that we use the most um, if we're coming in from the side or if we're coming in, our garage is just off of here. And when you're living in New England, you definitely need some sort of a mudroom because the weather is just all over the place. So as you can see, we've got our coats and our shoes, and it looks like I live with an entire baseball team, but this is just a small sample of my son's and my husband's baseball hats. And I actually tidied it up before you guys came, so it's pretty neat right now. Uh, a fun thing in this room, we used to own a boat, and here in Connecticut, it's a coastal state, and the hooks in this room are actually boat cleats. And there's some shiplap too, which has a nice nautical feel to it. So the runner in here is Stark, I think I'm pronouncing it right, I think it's antelope or antelopa carpet. I absolutely love this pattern. We had it in our old home, so I knew for sure I'd be repeating it in this home. And it's great for a number of reasons. I think it's beautiful, but for a mudroom, it's great at hiding a lot of dirt because of the speckly brown pattern. And then over here on the ceiling, I love to draw attention to the ceilings. If they're not painted blue, quite often you'll find wallpaper up on my ceilings. And this is a really pretty, I think it's a Ralph Lauren grass cloth that we went with here on the ceiling. Another kind of crazy thing about this house is that it has not just an elevator, but a glass elevator, um, which is kind of nuts. We didn't build this house. We did put the elevator in, it came with the house. Um, but now that we have it, it's certainly a very fun and nice thing to have. My mom is 90 and when she comes to visit, our guest room is upstairs. So she will actually use the elevator and take it to get her to the second floor. It also goes down to our basement. So if we have to move around heavy luggage or heavy pieces and we want to put them in the basement, it's really kind of nice to have a glass elevator to use. And if you want, I can, I can show it to you. Cosmo oddly loves the elevator. <laughs> And here it is. Um, I've actually thought about wallpapering this elevator. My husband thinks I'm nuts, but I think it would be a fun thing to do. And right off the mudroom back entrance area, we have the blue and white bathroom. Again, blue and white. I absolutely love the um, wallpaper here, which is quadrille again. It's another quadrille print. I believe it's called Sigourney. And I fell in love with this print years and years ago. So I was really excited to get to use it when we moved to this house. I knew immediately it was gonna go in this bathroom. Again, the original bathroom was very dark, a lot of browns, a lot of beiges. And we just replaced the countertop and painted this white, changed the hardware and changed the floors. We've got penny tile on the floors in here, which I think are so fun and they're not expensive at all. And then this is a full bath actually. I think um, the builder's idea was that it would be right off the pool because the pool's right back there. So he put a rather large shower into this bathroom as well. And we just continued with the penny tile theme all the way through. And I think it looks so fun and so modern with all this penny tile on the walls. So I have a little bit of pink in this room as well, more hydrangeas, more blue and white, a little bit of pink. And I just thought it looked so good in the family room with the pink butterflies against a similar shade of blue that I wanted to introduce just a little bit of pink into this room just to mix it up as well. Not too much, just a little pop. And then in this room, again, because it's off the pool, I have my son's baby um, swim trunks here, which I had professionally framed. 
back when I first had my son, uh, several of my girlfriends chipped in and they bought um, both these sets of bathing suits with matching ones for my husband, um, which I just thought was the cutest thing. And um, when he outgrew them, I saved them because I'm very sentimental like that and had them framed. And I think they look adorable in here. And it's just funny because now the little boy um, who would wear these is now almost six feet tall. And I think he's almost He's probably too big to even fit into um, the dad version of this bathing suit now. Okay, so right off the front entry, as you can see, we've got our front staircase. And uh, why don't we head upstairs? So right off the center bedroom hallway area, we have this nice landing space. I don't really know what to call this space. But um, we had plenty of living room furniture from our old home and it just seemed to work so nicely in here that we just set it up like another living room up here. And I've got more of my original artwork over here on the wall. Cosmo has a little bed up in here. We've got these fun um, pieces over here which reference, um, my parents are both native New Yorkers. Um, my in-laws are native New Yorkers. We're all originally from New York. So that's a little throwback to our status as New Yorkers at heart. And um, believe it or not, I actually do use this room more than the downstairs living room. Sometimes I'll come in here just to read or hang out and um, do my thing up here. And um, my grandmother didn't start painting um, until much later in life. She sort of picked it up in her um, senior years and she's self-taught and I love these. All my cousins, my brother, we all have, she was prolific and we all have many, many, many of her pieces. Um, I've got more throughout my house, but I just put a bunch of them all together here. These are some of my favorites. Um, actually this one, my oldest daughter did. I love this. She did this when she was in grade school and I was so blown away by it that I had it professionally framed. And just like the bathing suits in the bathroom, as you can see, I really like to frame personal items. This dress um, my mother wore when she immigrated here from Germany. They had escaped, um, well not escaped, but they left Nazi occupied um, Germany with her two older sisters and my grandparents. Um, they came across, they came through Ellis Island. It's a real you know, immigrant story. This was the dress she was wearing in her passport photo. I have the photo hanging on the wall over there. And um, my grandmother, who I never met, she actually made her that dress. Um, so it's, it's so special. I can't believe we still have it. It's so great. And if you wanna see my mom wearing the dress, <laughs> Here she is. Here's my mom wearing the dress in her passport photo um, when she came over as a very young child from Nazi occupied Germany. Before I take you into our primary bedroom, I just wanted to show you our laundry room. It's upstairs, not too far, and I just think it's so fun. I did this room myself and um, I had a lot of fun doing it. Very similar theme. I only changed the countertops, painted it white, changed the hardware, and I went with this really fun, um, crazy wallpaper. Just wanted it to be like a fun and interesting place. Um, you gotta spend time in here. It's a nice size to spend time in. Why not make it pretty? And um, I was working, you know, with these crazy, wall uh, ceiling slants and I just think uh, this wallpaper really lends itself to how crazy this slanting wallpaper, slanting ceilings are and I just think it came out really fun. And um, I also love that it's upstairs. Our old laundry room was downstairs and if you think about it, most of the things you're going to wash are upstairs, your bedding, your towels, your clothes. So to me it makes a lot more sense to have the laundry room upstairs. So that's really nice. So this is our primary bedroom. And again, I went with blue. This is a high gloss blue here on the ceilings. And then it's a matte blue, very, very subtle on the ceilings in here. 
And we have grass cloth wallpaper on the walls, which I really love to use in a bedroom because I just feel like it makes it feel very cozy and snug to have that on the walls. Okay, so again, I've got more of the blue and white jars happening in here. As soon as we moved in, I just knew they were gonna work perfectly. I already had them, I just plopped them down and they worked so nice. And then I got this selenite centerpiece that actually has votives inside, which I think looks so pretty in there. And we had only needed to change the surround. I think it was a very dark surround if I'm remembering it correctly. And we lightened it up by changing it to the marble that you see now. Right off this area, which is a very charming vestibule when you enter our primary bedroom. Um, it's so fun because it, it's like a suite. I mean, it's huge. It's bigger than our first apartment. And when we first came to look at the house, I thought this was a little weird and a little clumsy. There's sort of this bonus area off um, the bedroom. And when we first came to look at it, this bookcase wasn't here. It was just sort of like a little nook in the wall. So kind of a quirky, fun thing in here is a few of the books um, have wallpaper on them from my bedroom, from my childhood. Um, and this is like the most 70s wallpaper that ever wallpapered, I think. Um, and I lived with this chaotic wallpaper and I loved it. Uh, so you could say I always love wallpaper and these were on the books in my bedroom growing up because we went to a very fancy home decor boutique and I saw that they had used wallpaper as book covers and I just thought that was like the coolest thing and I had my mom cover some of my books as a child. Even then I was pretty interested in this stuff um, and those are just some of the original books covered in the original wallpaper from my childhood. Well, I have um, on this bookcase, this is a piece of mine that I did. It's a small piece. It's one of my favorites. Again, you can tell I like blue and white. I mean, I'm consistent, if nothing else. And then over here, I have another blue and white abstract piece of mine behind this fun brass statue. They sort of go together, I think. And as you can see, there's no windows in here. And when we came to look at it, I was like, what is this dark little room with no windows? But then we came back and looked at the house again. And I figured, you know what? This little nook is going to lend itself perfectly to a built-in bookcase. And I really was able to envision it as just a cozy little spot to read or watch TV or just hang out. And that's exactly how it turned out. And we put the mirror there to reflect the light. And I, I love this little space, especially during COVID. It was a great little place to um, run away and hide in. And then right off the little bonus area, I've got my little vanity area, little dressing room. Both of our closets are off of here. And when we bought the house, this was set up a lot differently. It was, it was a sink and like a wet bar and a refrigerator. And I think the idea was it to be like a hotel, maybe like a coffee bar. But I knew I was never going to use it that way. Um, I don't know. It just didn't make sense for me to have a refrigerator running in our bedroom. <laughs> and I really wanted a place to just be able to get dressed, do my hair, do my makeup. Um, and it gave me an excuse to use this really fun quadrille wallpaper that I have always loved. And I went with the matching valance over here. And I just love this little space. And then over here is more of my grandmother's artwork. These are two of my favorite pieces. These are a little different um, than what she used to paint traditionally, and they're really of her time. Um, the style, I, I just think they're so charming, and even the way they're framed, I just love these. I didn't frame them, they came to me that way. I think they're so sweet. So we have a finished attic, so we have a third floor, and we continued the same antelope runner, because I really love this pattern. And again, with the high gloss, everything continues up the same up to the third floor. And that's where my 
art studio is if you want to come up and take a look. So this is our attic. It's a finished attic, as you can see. And guess what? Blue and white is happening on this floor too. This is such a fun print and I wanted to use it somewhere. So I went with this little vestibule and the room that originally started out as a teenage hangout room. Um, but I sort of took over half of it as my art studio. So now I share this space with my teenage son, um, but not at the same time. Usually when he's at school, I'll paint. And then when he comes home from school and he needs to do his homework or he wants to be with his friends or gaming, it all happens up here. Um, so we've just made peace with it. This side of the room is mine and that side of the room is his. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose to come up here and set up my studio up here, um, the room gets a lot of natural light and this little nook was already here. We didn't put it here. It was kind of set up like a little stage. And so when I first started painting again, I unrealistically thought I could just contain myself to this tiny little um, nook up in here and I would just keep my paints here and I thought I'd have an easel here and I would just paint next to the window. Um, didn't take me much time to just sort of spill out with everything and just kind of take over more and more real estate in this room as the years went on and I've just expanded. I love to use mostly acrylic paints. Um, I took a few art courses a few years ago at, um, there's a great art school here in New Canaan called Silvermine. And um, I learned so many great new techniques where I was only using brushes beforehand. And they got me using all kinds of fun tools like rollers and scrapers, um, which are great um, to use in conjunction with acrylic paint because it's so malleable. And there's a lot of wooden canvases here because I love to paint on wood because I tend to use a lot of layers. And if you're scraping out a lot of layers, um, sometimes a canvas can't always take the wear and tear that I put into the paintings. So it's nice to have a wood surface to work on. So this little rocking chair over here is one of the few things I actually have um, from my childhood home growing up. It's an original Eames mid-century rocking chair. And uh, we even have a few pictures of my mom holding me as a baby and rocking me in this chair. So I think it's so special for that reason. To me, the word home means a safe place. It's your sanctuary where you can kick back and just relax and be your most authentic self. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.